The South African electric vehicle market is expected to grow exponentially in the coming years. South Africa has been slow to adopt the radical global shift to EVs for a few reasons. Namely, a lack of charging infrastructure, an unstable power grid, and high product costs deterring potential buyers. Many automakers have claimed that within the next decade or so, they will only produce EVs. While an EV world is still a while away, we as South Africans do have a limited choice for EVs in the country. Today we will be looking at the electric vehicles available in SA. Welcome back to the channel. First up, we have the Porsche Taycan. Porsche's first attempt at a fully electric vehicle. And as far as first attempts go, they have knocked it out the park. The Taycan range kicks off from 2.3 million for the base model Taycan S and goes all the way to more than 4 million rand for the turbo models. Taycan has a maximum claim range of 625Ks for the GTS models and has a 93.4 kilowatt hour battery that can be recharged at a maximum charge speed of 270 kilowatts, provided you can find a charger powerful enough. The Taycan range starts off with the single motor Taycan S, then upgrades to the dual motor Taycan 4S, then the so-called sweet spot GTS models, and finally the bonkers fast turbo and turbo S cars. There is then an estate version called the Sport Turismo, and finally an off-road focus model called the Cross Turismo. As you can see, you are spoilt for choice. The Taycan is one of the more favoured EVs amongst petrol heads. It looks great and is certainly worthy of the Porsche name. It gets a cool score of 8 out of 10. Next up, we come to the Audi e-tron models. The e-tron comes in three different versions, namely the regular e-tron SUV, the e-tron Sportback, which is one of these coupe SUV things, and lastly, the e-tron GT. The lineup starts from 1.75 million rand for the SUV and goes up to 3.3 million rand for the e-tron GT. These are big numbers, but this seems to be the trend with EVs. The e-tron GT is heavily based on the previously mentioned Porsche Taycan and therefore shares the same 93kWh battery but has less range of 488Ks and a reduced charging speed of up to 250kW. Because after all, an Audi can't be as good as a Porsche, right? Let me know in the comments if you agree with me. The regular e-tron SUV and sportbacks look like any other Audi SUV, which is not a bad thing. It's good, but nothing special. The GT is where things get interesting. In my opinion, this is the best car Audi make, apart from the R8 performance. I know all you RS3 fanboys will hate me for saying that. It gets a cool score of 7 out of 10. Next is the BMW i3. I am sure by now many of you will have seen this car either on the roads or parked at a charging station at a shopping center. The i3 starts from 750,000 Rand for the standard i3 and goes up to 914,000 for the i3S model. These prices for this car made me rethink this whole EV thing. The i3 has a claimed range of 307Ks for the i3S from a 38 kilowatt hour battery that can only charge at up to 49 kilowatts. Overall, this is not a car you dream of buying, and the i3's cool score is in its name. 3 out of 10. On to the BMW iX3. This is simply an electric version of the X3 that you all know. Same clothes, but different heart. The X3 is a popular car in Mzansi and the rest of the world, and BMW remembered this when they set the starting price at 1.29 million. X3's electric sibling comes with an 80 kilowatt battery that can charge at a decent speed of 150 kilowatts. All of this means a claimed range of 460 Ks, 
The internal combustion X3 is a great car and you won't have problems finding somewhere to full fuel the way you would with the electric iX3. It gets a cool score of 5 out of 10. Not to say the iX3 is no good, but you'd be better off with an X320D. The BMW iX got the internet jumping with debates when it debuted last year. It was BMW's built from the ground up electric luxury SUV with the face only an owner could love. The inside was a different story though. It was the debut of BMW's new interior design and it is fantastic. The iX starts at 1.7 million for the xDrive 40 and goes all the way up to 2.25 million for the bigger battery xDrive 50 model. You might look at these prices and say no, this is too much for an electric car or any car. And you are probably right. But bear in mind that a nicely specced X5 would cost around the same price. Size does matter when it comes to the battery packs and the big 111 kilowatt hour unit in the X50 model has a claimed range of 630 Ks and can charge at a lightning fast 200 kilowatts. It feels like BMW are intentionally making their cars look horrendous so that the world will talk about them. If they are, it is working. And yes, I am looking at you for series. I still think it is a unique thing and it gets 7 out of 10. Continuing with the BMW theme, we have the i4 M50. This is the electric sibling of the 4 series we all know by now. What do you think of the beaver tooth grill after seeing it for a while now? Has it grown on you? Tell me in the comments. Back to the video. The i4 M50 starts at an eye-watering 1.6 million rand and is the only variant available. And honestly, at that price, for this car, you'd be far better off with the 440i. The i4 has a claimed range of 521Ks courtesy of an 83kW battery, similar to the one found in the iX X40 SUV. The battery is capable of being charged at super speeds of up to 205kW. The i4 has a different interior to the normal 4 series, one more similar to that of the iX. It is overall a great machine and gets a 7 out of 10. We take a break from the Germans now and move on to something a lot more budget friendly. Introducing the Alexa City Bug. Yes, the coolest little thing you've never heard of. The Alexa City Bug is sold here in South Africa through dedicated Alexa dealerships and subsidiary dealerships. It touched down in SA in July 2021 and is a two-door, four-seater, run-around city car. The city bug has a tiny 9 kilowatt hour battery, good for either 100 or 200 k's of range if paired with an upgrade pack and has a top speed of 55 k's. The city bug has a recharge cost of just 15 cents per kilometer meaning that to get a range of 100Ks, it would in theory cost just 15 Rand. The city bug comes with features such as aircon, Bluetooth, reverse camera, electric windows, Google Maps satnav, Android tablet infotainment, digital instrument cluster, and more, all for the price of 230,000 Rand. The Alexa City Bug is a quirky car, and dare I say, a cool car. With the price of transport becoming what it is, we will all soon be in City Bugs. I want mine in red. It gets a cool score of 10 out of 10. We now come to the Mini Cooper SE, an all-electric three-door Mini. If you don't count the City Bug as a full-on car, the Mini Cooper SE is the cheapest new electric car you can buy in SA. Meaning that the BMW i3 costs more than this. Imagine. The Mini starts from 709,400 and only comes in a three-door guise. It has a dismal claimed range of 215Ks. So you would get even less than that 
in real world driving. It is powered by a 32.6 kilowatt hour battery that can be charged at up to 50 kilowatts. To be honest, I don't have much to say about the Mini Cooper SE other than you should not waste your time with it. It gets a 2 out of 10. That brings us to the final car on the list, the Volvo XC40 Recharge. This is another example of when a manufacturer takes an existing internal combustion car body and makes it an EV. The XC40 Recharge is of course based on the existing XC40. So imagine my surprise when I see its starting price of 1.2 million for the electric model. That is ridiculous. Anyway, the XC40 has a 78 kilowatt hour battery capable of providing a decent 418 claimed kilometers of range and charging speeds of up to 151 kilowatts. Again, not much to say about this, except don't waste your time. Cool score is 4 out of 10. Now we will take a look at some upcoming electric models expected for the South African market this year. Mercedes-Benz are expected to release the EQ SUVs later this year. We will be getting the EQA, EQB and EQC SUVs, all of which are based on the internal combustion equivalents, such as the GLC and GLA and so on. SA will also be receiving the built from the ground up EQS and EQE that utilize the purpose built EAV2 platform. They both look like a bar of soap, but the spaceship interior makes up for it in my opinion. Mercedes Benz will also be partnering with a local company called Grid Cars to provide more public charging stations. Volkswagen are expected to release their ID4 SUV later this year. Whilst not too much is known about it, VW claim a range of around 500 Ks, which is indeed healthy, and say it will be a more affordable EV option. Considering VW are asking 500 K for a Polo, who knows what they mean when they say affordable. Other noteworthy emissions. I just wanted to point out that I think the Kia EV6 and Hyundai Ioniq 5 are stunning cars and I think they could do very well in the country and it is a shame we don't receive them for the African market. So there you have it. This is the current state of the EV world in South Africa. The current prices of EVs mean that they are still out of reach for majority of buyers in SA. The real world range from the vehicles and a lack of charging outlets mean they are still not a viable mode of transport, especially if your EV is your only car because range anxiety is a real thing. However, with the rising price of fuel and big automakers choosing to invest in the country's EV infrastructure and expand their electric vehicle portfolios, the dream of driving an EV could get ever closer to ordinary consumers in the coming years. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a like and consider subscribing for more content. We'll see you in the next one.